joining us right now. Uh, the guy at the center of the whole thing, the president of your Oakland Athletics, which you can hear each and uh, every game right here on Sports 1140 KHTK, Dave Cavill. Dave, welcome in. It's Dave and Kyle and Jay. Thanks for uh, being up this morning and joining us. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Getting closer, aren't we? I mean, really, truthfully. Oh, we are. We are. We're building a lot of momentum. You know, obviously, this week's a big week. We have multiple votes, uh, two days uh, in the California Assembly and Senate. You know, today we have the rally at 1.30. And, you know, these are all just really important moments uh, for moving the ballpark project forward and getting to that 2023 grand opening of the new ballpark uh, in Oakland, which is exciting. As you know, the 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 nine one six and the two oh nine and and the five three oh the these places up here all have a very strong uh, A's following. And uh, as I said, there are massive differences. But one thing that we can identify here with in the Sacramento area is activating the fan base uh, against any opposition uh, when it comes to building a new arena and or a new stadium. So, if you could, what what is going on today at the Capitol, and why do we need A's fans out there in the colors? Well, we have a um, you know a pretty big vote of the Assembly Natural Resource Committee, and it's on um, one of our two bills that we're moving through the legislature this year uh, to get approval of the waterfront ballpark at Jack London Square. And this is the one that's really about a trust exchange, which is a pretty standard process that the State Lands Commission goes through on a project like this. But it requires state legislation, and we need to show the legislatures and, and all the different people up here that there are a lot of fans and and community members who are in support of this great privately financed ballpark. And uh, that's why we're looking for folks to, sh- to turn out at one thirty. We're going to have a rally, and then we're going to basically go in and, and have the session. So it should be a great day for, for all A's fans, and we're kind of calling on all the folks, especially, like you said, like in the 916 and in the Sacramento area who are big A's fans. So as you're preparing for a vote like this, what kind of information do you guys – uh, have to go present because it's obviously not just walking in there and saying, "Hey, we want a ballpark. Uh, give it to us now." Uh, what kind of preparation do you guys uh, do that goes into that? It's very extensive, and we work hand in hand with um, the city of Oakland and the port of Oakland. Um, Mayor Libby Schaff and myself will both testify in the committee today um, in front of the legislature and really discuss the benefits of the project: the three billion dollars in economic impact, five thousand new jobs the fact that it's privately financed and just so people have a sense of like why this is such a transformative project um, for Oakland and for the East Bay. Dave Cavill with us. Uh, Dave, uh, from what I've read, uh, A's fans and an A's contingent, not the only people at the state Capitol uh, today. I know that, that there has been some chatter from the maritime industry about the location here at the Howard Terminal. And again, I, I, I'm sorry to keep drawing parallels, but it's just all too familiar when when, when we finally got to the point where we had site control, where we had the money, and there was always some guy you know, yelling about something that uh, ended up really, in our case at least, ended up being people were mad that money wasn't flowing into their pockets. It was flowing elsewhere. I know you're much more... Uh, you have more decorum than I do, but what is the issue? And, and, and in your opinion, why, why is there even a disagreement? Well, I mean, I think it's all around the future of maritime activities in the Port of Oakland. And, you know, we really feel, and, you know, hand in hand with the port commissioners in the city, that our project can enhance maritime capability, provide additional funds for the port to reinvest, to ensure that there can be other generations of maritime jobs. And we've made a lot of concessions and adjustments to our ballpark plan to ensure that there's no negative impact on the maritime community. And so we really feel that the, the two things can coexist. You can have a thriving port in Oakland, and you can have a beautiful privately financed ballpark at the waterfront, and that is what our plan is. Was there any... Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to the word I'm looking for here. Was there any correlation between uh, getting a Chris Davis extension done and uh, this ballpark in terms of what you're trying to signal to the fan base? Well, I think the key thing is is that, you know, as we move forward with the ballpark project to become more confident that we're getting to a point where, um, you know, some of the risk factors are falling away, we're getting these votes moving forward, you know, we feel more confident in obviously extending our players and reinvesting in our players because we know that there's additional revenues coming with the new building. Right. And so I think you're going to continue to see signings like this because – they kind of go hand in hand 
it bridge us to this new ballpark where we're going to have a lot more revenue to pay our players. And that's going to be really the, one of the main reasons we're doing the ballpark fan experience, but also keeping our players together and winning world championships. That is the goal here. Speaking with Dave Cavill, A's president. Dave, a big thing we saw in Sacramento when it came to getting a new building or a new facility was you got a lot of people that would say, why are we building a Kings arena? And I hear you probably hear a lot of, well, why are we just building a stadium for the A's? Can you speak to a lot of the ancillary developments that are going to go around the stadium and why this might be important for somebody who's maybe not like a diehard A's fan? Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is going to create um, an enhanced neighborhood at the waterfront. You know, already 26,000 people live down there about a mile from Howard Terminal. But this is going to provide new neighborhood services, access to the waterfront, parks, open space, you know, places for bars and restaurants, small business owners can set up, places for folks to live. The Bay Area has a huge housing crisis. And so all these things together are going to be built around in this ballpark district that's way bigger than baseball. You know, you have the ballpark, that's kind of anchor, but all these other pieces are going to provide a really amazing amenity, you know, basically every day of the year. And that's something I think that folks can get excited about. You can see it, obviously, what's happened in Sacramento, AT&T Park or Oracle Park now in San Francisco. So many cities have undergone that transformation, and it's been so positive. Ace President Dave Cavill with this. Um, you know, uh, you're, you, you have a, a good friend and colleague that, that I do as well, uh, Chris Granger. And... <laughs> I remember talking to Chris during this whole thing when he was with the president of the Kings and, and Chris, Chris and you, I, I, I don't know you as well, but I see a lot of similarities. You guys are very smart, very professional, and you have, you have a lot more discipline than I do when it comes to frustration and temper and, 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 and everything that surrounds us, because this is a lot of money and it's a lot of work. It's a huge step. I just fail to understand. I mean, no offense to the city of Oakland, really, truly no offense to the city of Oakland, but the reputation, at least, the uh, the narrative is that uh, billion-dollar privately funded investments aren't exactly knocking down the doors there. The Raiders are gone, are going to be gone. The uh, Warriors are, are going to San Francisco. And here you have you guys that are privately funding a stadium a beautiful ballpark that, yes, is going to create jobs and is going to bring people into the city and is going to help continue to infect the core with energy. Uh, do you ever sit back? Do you ever get frustrated and go, guys, this is a no-brainer here. Why is there an issue ever? Well, I think it's important to respect the public process because especially in Oakland, I think people are very you know, socially active and community active. And so we just need to make sure it's a project that's a win for everyone. And that's what we're doing. You know, we've laid out a great plan. It's been informed by hundreds of hours of community input. And as we move through these approvals and really work hand in hand with the city, you know, I think that momentum will continue to build. And so that's something that we're looking for, you know, this week, obviously, with, you know, the vote today and seeing our fans there turning up and supporting us. That's going to be an important moment uh, for success. So specifically, just for A's fans listening, and we'll, of course, uh, tweet this out as well. Specifically, what can A's fans do today at, at what time? And, and, and I mean, everyone knows where the capital is, but what would you yeah, like to so, see A's fans do? Yeah, so between one thirty and 2.30, we have a rally to support, you know, the A's ballpark efforts in Sacramento. It's at the state capitol, and that we're basically meeting at, at 10th and Out Street. And we're going to have, you know, Stomper out there, the Green Machine. We're going to have merchandise, giveaways, food. It's just going to be a great celebration of A's baseball, giveaways, like I said. And then, obviously, we're going to you know, show everyone in the capital and in the region the support for A's baseball and what we're doing in Oakland. And it would be great to get folks together and, and really have a shared experience to push this across the finish line together. How's everything else going as far as you, know, you, you guys have so many innovative programs that we talk about all the time. Uh, we especially, you know, the tree houses. Maybe our favorite. We had our good friend Ken Korak on last week, who was doing a, a book signing with himself and Susan Slusser for their new book uh, out at the Treehouse Saturday, Sunday. I know it wasn't the results you guys wanted over the weekend, but uh, I know Kyle was out there, thirty-four thousand plus strong against the Blue Jays. So, I, 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 beyond the stadium itself, uh, how's everything going for you guys this year? Well, it's going great. We have a, a great young team. You know, obviously we have Chris Davis signed to an extension. You know, we have all these great young players like Chappie, Matt Olson, who's going to be coming back, you know, off the injury list pretty soon. And so 
we're feeling very good about where we are. You know, I think we're a young team. We can be a little streaky. But I think with that comes, you know, the, a lot of the excitement, the ups and downs. And I think overall, you know, we're on the right trajectory for success. And then the Coliseum is just becoming a better place. You know, in the interim, before we build this ballpark, we want to make sure it's, it's fun for our fans, whether it's the new stomping ground, the kids zone, um, obviously the tree house, the new seating products. All these things are important for us to understand how to build our new venue and to make sure our fans have a great experience now. Uh, Dave, do you foresee the A's Access sticking around? Because I got to tell you, uh, I'm an A's Access member uh, along with my girlfriend, and it is uh, – it's incredible, man. Uh, so, so we. I was just wondering if that's going to be a program you guys have uh, moving forward. Yeah, we, we'd like to continue it straight into the new ballpark. You know, it might be modified a little bit, but sure. you know, it's been such a huge success, like you said. And I think it really aligns more with the way people are consuming sports and entertainment products now. Yeah. It, it just the notion of buying eighty-one games is just like. Yeah, that's from another era, you know, and so we just need to be smarter about how we package our product and get people excited about baseball. Dave, I, I want to ask you a question um, just straight out because I've had this yeah. conversation without you and, and I, I, I think it's disingenuous not to have it uh, with you on the phone. Oftentimes, you know, and I know that there has been um, – it, it hasn't always been the best relationship between fans and ownership and salaries and trades and all that stuff throughout the years. And you guys have worked very, very hard. And Chris Davis, that signing was a huge step uh, in, in, in combating that. And you've been doing this for years now with your, your, your innovative programs. But it was a few weeks ago, um, I think it was a Tuesday or Wednesday game, I want to say first week of the season, Boston Red Sox. I want to say attendance was twelve or 13,000 people. And I understand it's a work night, but it's still the defending champions before we knew they weren't a good team. Um but you guys have a private. You have you have rich people um, willing to give up uh, hundreds of millions, if not billions, of dollars to build a stadium in one of the most expensive places in the entire country. I imagine. I mean, that's a gamble just from a business standpoint, isn't it? That's a gamble that if you know to borrow from Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. And I imagine that's seeded by a. a, a a, a pretty heavy confidence in the fan base. We do have a confidence in the fan base. And I think, you know, the location matters a lot. You know, I think the most successful ballparks are built in these urban cores where people can walk and bike from the downtown area where they live or work. And that's why it's so important that the waterfront location is successful. And we build there because when we think about the long-term success, you look at what at t Park did, you see what's happened in Sacramento with the Gold One Center. You look to like places like Cleveland, you know, where you have Jacobs Field. Those are the stadiums that have really been, you know, lasted the time. You know, they've actually been, had millions of fans come. And so that's a really important part of this and making sure that we're successful is the location, is the ballpark district. Uh, and that's why we're really committed to the waterfront location. One thirty to two thirty today. A's fans, and I'm sure if you didn't say it, I'll I'll say it again. Uh, I'm sure encouraged to wear uh, their Kelly green, all their A's stuff. Green and gold, green and gold. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, food, uh, merch giveaways, all kinds of stuff. Just uh, kind of a an Oakland A's party out there as you guys uh, try to do the uh, the tough work inside today from uh, one thirty to two thirty at the state capitol. Got it right. You got it right. That's perfect. Thank you guys. Well, thank you and. Uh, you say hi to my buddy Canal. I know he's on that team. So uh, I will. Despite, I will. I talk to him every day. So d- that's great. D- despite his presence, I still have confidence that you guys will overcome all <laughs> obstacles. And uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon, Dave. Appreciate you. Take care, guys. All right, you too. That's uh, <laughs> that's President Dave Cavill. You're listening to the Drive.